is the spotlight, where we shine the spotlight on the arts. And we're very excited to have with us this show those patrons that are partners in education with us that support the arts, arts education, and all that we do for students here in St. Lucie County. It's an exciting show, and we hope that you're going to enjoy it as much as we're going to enjoy talking with the guest that has joined us today. And joining us is Mr. Al Hager from the Fort Pierce Jazz and Blues Society. Would you please say hello to our viewing audience? Well, hello. It's very nice to be here this morning with you, Dr. Perry. It is indeed a pleasure for us to have you with us as well. Also, as a dear friend of the arts of education is Terry Davis, the wonderful principal at Forest Grove Middle School, representing Bluebird Educational Foundation. Mr. D Davis, please say hello to us. It's always a privilege and an honor to be here. Well, gentlemen, I, I know we're going to talk about the Fort Pierce Jazz and Blues Society, and we're going to talk about Bluebird Educational Foundation and what those organizations um, do for students uh, here in the area, how those organizations help perpetuate uh, the arts staying alive, and, and in both of your cases, music staying alive here in St. Lucie County. But before we do that, it is always nice for our viewing audience to know who's joining us. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Hager. I'm a retired music teacher. I taught, uh, my first year of teaching was 1968, uh, elementary through college, and retired in 2009. Had a fabulous career, and, uh, but it's still continuing. There's a lot going on right now. I started on uh, saxophone, was my first instrument, but uh, now I play bass and trumpet and play with several different organizations in the area. The Jazz Society, I've been with, with the Jazz Society since 2009 as the Education and Scholarship Chairman. And with that, we give scholarships and uh, we, we have a, several programs, one Jazz in the Schools, the other is called Eye to Eye, and I'll get to more details about those later. Where did you retire from? From Stewart Middle School was my last uh, school. I was there 19 years, and uh, it was time, and uh, it's been fantastic since then. I've loved it. You retired from Stewart Middle School, and although we like to say you're retired, you're still doing some work in instruction. Uh, quite a bit. I have uh, 30 private students that I see four days a week. I play in several groups. I have two church groups I play in at Palm City Presbyterian. One is a group called Cornerstone, uh, a rock and roll band that does the contemporary service. And I also play in the Palm City Presbyterian Brass Choir. Uh, I also do the play string bass with the Indian River Pops Orchestra. Uh, I direct the Treasure Coast Flute Choir with my wife. We have a performance uh, let's see, we had one last week, and we've got another one in two weeks. Um, the Indian River Pops Orchestra is my Tuesday night gig, and we have a concert at the EC Theater in uh, Palm Beach Gardens Sunday evening. So like so, I said, you're really not yeah, you're there's retired. A lot, there's a lot going on. <laughs> well, no, we also have, you know, the biggest thing right now are two other really, really good groups. One is called FDO, the Big Swingin' Band. We performed last Wednesday for a street dance in downtown Fort Pierce as part of the Jazz Society. Uh, it's an incredible band, wonderful group. Another group is the uh, McCartney Mania. Perhaps you've heard of them. It's a, a Wings and Beatles cover band and will be performing at the Black Box Theater in Fort Pierce on the 16th, it's a week from Saturday, okay, uh, for a Food for Families fundraiser. Okay. And that's, a, that's an incredible group. Cool, so. maybe we'll get some of our patrons yes, to come out go. and join you. Mr. Davis, it's your turn. <laughs> Introduce yourself to our audience, let them know who you are. Well, currently I'm principal of Forest Grove Middle School in Fort Pierce. The Bay. fantastic <laughs> principal of Forest Grove. I just had to add that to And uh, I've been working in St. Lucie Public Schools uh, as an administrator since 1999 at Centennial High School at Fort Pierce Central High School and at Port, um, Port St. Lucie High School. Um, I'm an amateur violinist and I volunteer every year to play for the um, amazing musicals put on by director Patrick Madden at uh, Port St. Lucie High School every year. And we're doing Bye Bye Birdie this summer. It's gonna be a fantastic show. Um, and uh, so um, I'm really involved in, in education, professionally and personally. 
and I'm excited to be part of Bluebird Educational Foundation and what we do to provide uh, unique uh, support for kids in the arts and in music specifically, jazz and blues. Now you call yourself an amateur violinist, but uh, um, you also played with some of your students most recently. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, we had uh, at the Night of the Stars, you know, where I'm, I was really excited to bring chorus back to Forest Grove Middle School after a 10-year um, hiatus. And we have an exceptional director there, Mrs. Kathy Asking. In fact, we're putting on the Lion King Jr. in May. And uh, it, for the first year of uh, the return of, of chorus and choir to Forest Grove Middle School, it's, it's just been absolutely outstanding. And we were invited to perform at the Night of the Stars, the annual recognition program for employees of the St. Lucie County School District. And Miss Osking chose a, a song, You Raise Me Up, and asked if I would play the violin intro, middle, and, and end to that. So it was really exciting to be able to get up there and actually play with the students that night. Also, your dad was a musician as well. <coughs> yes, my yeah. father was a professional jazz musician and turned college professor. And uh, that, uh, you know, music is like my third parent growing up. And uh, met, had it through that, had the opportunity to meet a lot of, you know, uh, big name jazz artists that would come to the house when they were on tour and doing clinics at the university with him. So it was an exciting time to be growing up and a great, great uh, uh, experience and exposure to music from a very young age. I, I know we're going to focus on the Fort Pierce Jazz and Blues Society and Bluebird Educational Foundation, but I think it's important for our guests, our viewing audience, to know what is it that drives those persons that are, are connected to, to those organizations. Um, so tell me, and you guys can just jump in, just jump in. Why do you think it's important to encourage every student to participate in one or more areas of the arts? I'll go ahead and start with that. I, I know it's, music is important. I've been a band guy since I was a kid. One of the, uh, uh, starting on saxophone, when I was in ninth grade, the high school director said, would you like to be in the jazz band? You play okay, you know? And I went, oh yeah, I think I would. From then on, all the way through high school, it was, it was a wonderful thing. At the, before my senior year in high school, I went to a camp at Florida State University. Went to uh, just regular music camp. That was what made me decide I wanted to be an educator. And education, being an educator to me is a noble profession. I think it's a little more difficult now for many of the, the younger teachers in particular uh, to make it work, but my career has been incredible. And we're doing that now with the Jazz Society. We have uh, programs, uh, we give away scholarships. In fact, the next a week from Tuesday will be our first audition night for those high school seniors who are looking to, for a $1,000 scholarship. And over the last five years, we've given an average of $10,000 a year in $1,000 increments to deserving high school seniors. They have to earn it. They have to write an essay. They have to perform two tunes at one of the jazz jams at the Black Box Theater. Those will be on Tuesday. We have four audition nights for them. And uh, that's, that's coming up right now. So we've got, right now we have 10 uh, applicants. And tomorrow, which is... Well, for us now, it's uh, April the 10th, or 9th rather, 8th, whatever, Seven. is the deadline, <laughs> okay. is the deadline for application. So I'm expecting to hear some more, uh, get a, a couple more in in the next day or so. so. So tell us, Al, just a little bit more, tell us a little bit more about the background of the Jazz and Blues Society. Jazz and Blues Society, this is our 20th year. And I've, I've only been with the group for six years, but over the last 20 years, one of the mission statements is to promote live music and to work uh, in the schools, to have things going on in the schools. One has been scholarships, and we've been giving away scholarships for, for the last 19 years. And we, one of the programs we have is called Jazz in the Schools. And I really got this thing moving so that we bring in a rhythm section, piano, bass, drums, and guitar, and then either me or Mark Green, who comes in to work with the students. And we, have, uh, uh, we spend an hour with their jazz band. The kids get a one-on-one -on -one with the rhythm section in particular, which is where a lot of the problems happen in, in jazz bands. Uh, and it's, we've done 18 this year. And we've had 18 sessions this year. Another program we have is called Eye to Eye, where a music director gets in touch with us and asks us 
to work with an individual student. So we have uh, either at the school or at, a, at the student's home or whatever, uh, where they might not otherwise get uh, jazz instruction. So those work out great. We've been having a ball. And then you were talking about the scholarship. So let's go, go right back there again. The scholarship application is April 8th, which tomorrow. is tomorrow. Which is tomorrow. Which is tomorrow. Those students have to write an essay. And they have to do an audition. The What's aud the essay on? Uh, what their, uh, their background and their intentions after high school. Okay. They do not have to major in music, but we assume if they're going through the effort of playing uh, a performance, that they will continue with their music. And some of them, we have, I have a former student, one of my personal students, who is now at Berkeley, just graduating from Berkeley. And he is, you're gonna read his name. Okay. He's, he's okay. gonna be good. <laughs> so they write the essay, and then tell us a little bit about the audition. The audition is, uh, they play two selections, or sing. We have vocalists mm -hmm. who, who do it also. Two selections, and we have a list of tunes with the keys that they have to do 20 tunes. They have to choose two from 20. Uh, I have a private student right now who chose All Blues and Blue Bassa. Those are gonna be his two tunes. They go up on stage, we introduce them, and they kick off the band so they have the right tempo. So they're the leader. They're the front man for this, for this professional group that's on stage. And how many scholarships are given out to those students? Well, we, uh, it's a merit scholarship. So there are years, one year we had 17 applicants and we gave 11. So not everybody can do it. If they don't have the, the chops to make it, they don't pass or if they're not completely prepared. So it, it really puts a, a, quite a bit on them. They can go to any of the jazz jams every Tuesday to practice. And uh, I have a student I saw yesterday who went this past Tuesday night. He said, it was cool. He said he'd never been before. And he had a great time. He said, everybody was nice. The audience loved him. They all applauded. And I said, well, that's what I've been telling you. You know, you got to go. <laughs> okay. So there's an application that's due tomorrow. To do tomorrow. <laughs> then there's an uh, essay that goes along with mm -hmm. that. Then there's an, the audition. And then they have to perform Twice as, did you no, say? No, they just, they perform two tunes. Two tunes. On one audition. Now, uh, May 24th is when we'll present the scholarships. Uh, May 4th, 13th. May 13th, is that right? One of those days. We're going to, uh, we'll notify them and have them show up at the black box on May 24th. So that's and like that's, the audition for them. No, their auditions are, I'll give you the audition that. dates. Do that. The audition dates are, um... Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, <laughs> I got that on my calendar. Uh, a week from Tuesday, the following Tuesday, and then uh, the, it, the last two Tuesdays in May, or April, and the first two Tuesdays in May. In May. Okay, and at the black box. At the black box. Okay. Now, the third Tuesday in May, the FDO, the Big Swingin' Band, which is the group that Mark Green and I own, will be performing. And uh, then the following Tuesday, which is the 24th, that's when uh, we'll present the scholarships. And what time on those Tuesdays, in case some of our viewing audience want to come in here? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock at the Black Box Theater right. at the Sunrise Theater. The, the Theater. performances start at seven, but we do all of the, the other stuff, the student things at eight o'clock, between eight and nine o'clock. Okay, Davis, tell yes, us sir. a little bit about Bluebird Educational Foundation. So Bluebird Education uh, Foundation works to provide opportunities for students in the schools to be exposed to and to participate in um, blues and jazz music. And personally important to me because it was my father's music and it's music that uh, really defines uh, um, American culture, uh, instant composition in the idioms of, of jazz or blues. So some of the things that we do at Bluebird are uh, what we call recycling in the key of E, E being E for education, and we, what we do is we recycle instruments. So many, many people take music lessons or are involved in band or orchestra in high school and middle school, and then for one reason or another, they don't continue that. And that clarinet or that saxophone sits in a closet somewhere for decades. So what we invite the public to do is donate those instruments. And our band directors at the middle and high school levels in St. Lucie County identify students who may not have the, the means to purchase their own instrument for home practice. And uh, then we, we, we identify those students we work with uh, an individual who repairs or updates them as need be so that they're a usable instrument, and then uh, we donate them to the students. And over the past 
Uh, Ten years, we've donated about $20,000 worth of instruments to students who might not have had the opportunity to rent or own their own instrument and help them um, pursue their, their musical interests in high school and beyond. Um, we also are a big uh, um, promoter of, of master classes. And uh, this is something that I saw as a child growing up with artists like Gary Burton, Joe Morello, you know, big name jazz people of my father's generation. Um, and they would come and uh, students would perform for them. And then they would, you know, the leaders in their fields would give the students feedback on their performance and how to improve their performance and such and such, um, those kinds of things. So we try to provide those kinds of experiences for kids in middle and high school. Um, and the formula that, that, that I like the best, and, and it's a little complicated, but it's worked a number of times, is that the, um, the clinician or the artist um, will come to a school during the day um, and work with their jazz band. Um, and then that group uh, that night, the school jazz band, will open for that musician and play a song or two. So it's a huge opportunity for those kids, and they can brag, well, I opened for Jason Marsalis or something like that. And uh, it's an unforgettable experience for those kids. Um, and uh, so those are the two things that, that we do. In order to fund those, we host some community things. We host uh, Tasting and Grooving on top of the Fort Pierce parking garage every January with, uh, um, where there's food and drink available for purchase. There's an, an, an admission fee. And that funding goes to support these things and to support the cost of bringing in the artists to do the performances and the master classes with our students. I know in the past, with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, April is Jazz Appreciation Month, and I know in the past, Bluebird Education Foundation has supplied information to our schools about jazz appreciation. Right. We get uh, posters and whatnot. There's like information kits that we get through the Smithsonian, and we distribute those to the schools. A lot that's going on as well for scholarship, for the continuation of music, for students to be able to play uh, music, and just to keep the arts alive here in, in St. Lucie County. Uh, Mr. Davis, you mentioned the recycling in the key of E, where uh, people will have those instruments sitting in their closets. If they wanted to donate an instrument, how would they go about doing this? They so? can just contact us at our website, bluebirdeducationfoundation.org. There's a phone number on there. And if you do it in before December, then you can get a, a receipt that you can use to take that as a charitable donation off your taxes. So. It, it can help you as a person if uh, you're not using that instrument, and it would certainly be welcome to a student who might not otherwise be able to afford to fi or finance uh, an instrument for home practice use. And Ms. Ager, you mentioned that the scholarship is <coughs> due tomorrow. I know it's real close to the wire, but just in case a student wanted to pick up an application, how could they do so? Our website is www.jazzsociety.org. Or they can email me if you want to put that in the, uh, in the thing. That's fine. That's, that's how we've been doing it now. They email me. I send them all the information. I get letters out. Well, I send letters to every music educator. I need to get you on the list. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> um, uh, stating that these are the things that we do every, uh, every month. So a letter goes out every month with all of these dates. And they, the first one came out in September. So it's not that the directors don't know about what's going on. And then I send out separate letters to those who are the applicants with more details about how to write the essay, how to prepare for the audition, um, mostly just go to one of the jazz jams so they can see what's going on. This is the stage you're going to be on, and this is what you're going to Tell us that website write. again. www.jazzsociety.org. And Terry, yours is? www.bluebirdeducationfoundation.org. Okay. All right. We're going to highlight you a, a little bit more, uh, uh, your organizations, just a little bit more. But, but let's get back to talking about music and music life in general. If you had an opportunity to speak, for instance, to the school board member or to a legislator, what would you say to that person to ensure that they always uh, make sure the arts are available for children? Uh, it's, it's no secret that those students who are involved in music, in band, in orchestra, in chorus, perform in their school studies better than the others. And that, that's not a secret, that's a documented fact. Uh, and I sincerely believe it. I know that problem solving, um, just, just how to read music, that's a puzzle. And knowing how to do that, knowing that language of music, makes, uh, uh, makes you a better person. You can't get rid of the arts. I think Plato said that. <laughs> and he even goes back maybe further than that. But I, 
I, I've always been an advocate of education and working with uh, with music students. So it, it's important. It's very, very important. Mr. Davis? Well, you know, right now education seems to be dominated by test scores. And um, I think that, you know, if you think back to some of the greatest uh, cultures in the world, you know, we don't really remember them for test scores. We remember them for their arts. You know, that's the arts are uh, what are left behind by great civilizations. Um, our arts in America, um, you know, we have some indigenous arts, um, which, which we call jazz and blues. Those are our exports to the world. Um, and I think that just for their own purposes, the arts are extremely important. A well-rounded person um, needs to have exposure and ideally some kind of performance experience with the arts because it adds to the value as a person and it adds to the value of the community. I think I know the answer to this, but I want our viewing audience to know your answer. What is your favorite type of music and why? Ah, that's, that's, that's a very good question. My favorite kind of music is music that's played well. Ooh, ooh. I, I, uh, I play in several different venues with rock and roll groups. I've played in several reggae bands, uh, country western bands. Uh, show bands. I've worked with uh, Mr. Davis on a couple of his productions also, and so there's that. The uh, uh, the orchestra set this afternoon. I will be going to Brevard County and conducting the Brevard County All County Middle School Jazz Band. So I get to work with the jazz band side. Our big band uh, does that also. So to answer the question, if it's done well and it's done seriously. Every, every piece of music has got to be done correctly. It will never be perfect. But if it's done correctly and sounds good, that's the kind of music I like. You sound just like a music teacher when you <laughs> answer that question, Ms. Hager. <laughs> Mr. Davis. Well, you know, I grew up playing classical music um, in orchestral settings um, and chamber settings. But I also, um, you know, because of my father, had a great deal of exposure to um, jazz. And uh, so... You know, I, I really like what, uh, what Al said about uh, music played well. You know, I'm not, country is really low on my list, <laughs> but um, at one, you know, one time I happened to go to a place when I was um, a lot younger where there was a country band and there was a steel guitar player there and his improvisation was spectacular. And at that, until that time I had no idea that there was improvisation in country music. So um, I had a great conversation with him afterwards and he happened to know my father and, and uh, I, I agree, music played well, um, but for me, my personal favorite's probably jazz because of my kind of family legacy. So in saying that music played well, I'm going to assume that both of you agree that students in educational settings should be exposed to all genres of music. Absolutely, absolutely. The orchestral part of it, uh, playing with the Indian River Pops Orchestra, that's great fun, and I've become a much better upright bass player playing you know, the, the classical stuff, uh, just because of that, helps electric bass playing too. So every aspect of music is important. Knowing, knowing the history of music, um, as Terry mentioned about the, uh, 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 the history of, of jazz, I mean, this is our indigenous art form, our jazz education program. In fact, this summer, we have, uh, we're doing three weeks of a jazz camp uh, we've been doing. We this. meaning the Jazz and Blues Society. Jazz and Blues Society is putting together a jazz camp. It's run by Mark Green, who is uh, has done a fabulous job with this. Uh, he and I and several members of the board of directors, uh, we do. It's it's five days a week, ten to two, and the first uh, time is June 24th, then June 27th, and then we have an advanced group that'll begin on July 4th. Uh, one of the things that we do there is they compose. The students get to compose a blues tune. I write out what they sing or play on their instrument, get everybody a copy of it, and they perform that at one of the jazz jams after the camp. So that's a time for them to, to and they didn't, I can't compose. Well, yeah, you can. Everybody can. So tell me this, since you're retired, and we'll let you use yeah, that right. phrase, <laughs> in all the years of teaching, what is it that you learned? about teaching and about students and about music. Wow, that's a, that, that we could spend a whole another session on that alone. Uh, I learned that I think I got out at the right time. I, 
uh, lesson plans. And I, I look at lesson plans as like needing a GPS to get from your house to your school. You know, that's, it's, it's not that. Now, we know what we do. And music educators and coaches, uh, art teachers, those who are involved in that, have a, a little different thing. Uh, their structure, they're very, very structured, but the structure is different from a math class or an English class or a science or a social studies class. I want to throw out a statement, and I want you to elaborate on what the statement m m says. Here's your statement, Al. The arts teach children that problems can have more than one solution. I think I mentioned that before. I look at reading a piece of music as a puzzle, and there's several ways to interpret it. We have definite structure. This note lasts this long. Uh, this tempo is, is what it is, so you do have that. But there's some uh, opening for a little creativity and interpretation. So, Mr. Davis, yours is the arts celebrate multiple perspectives. You know, music's language. And when you learn a, um, a language other than your natural language, and in our case in the United States, it's mostly English, it gives you a different way to interpret reality. Um, a different way to um, feel and think about things. And I think that exposure to music, and especially performing music, gives you a glimpse into a different reality because you're really using your instrument and the ensemble and the people you're playing with to express something, just like you do with a, with a language when we're speaking a language. And I think that that's a very powerful part of, uh, of music and of music performance is that um, different way of looking at, at reality. Here's my final question to you. When did you first fall in love with music? I, uh, I, when it came time to join, you know, seventh grade, back then it was junior highs. My dad was a saxophone player, and, but he died when I was seven. Mom put the saxophone in the closet, similar to what we're doing with recycling instruments, and it came time to either join chorus or band and mom says, well, we got this saxophone in the closet. Why don't you play that? And I went, okay, why not? And I had a wonderful music teacher in seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, and in fact, stayed in the same school from seventh grade through high school on the west coast of Florida. And at first time picking up the saxophone, this is how the reed works. This is how you make a, a sound. I was going, this is cool. This is very, very cool. And it it became what I did. I was always in the band, never, never left the band, went to uh, FSU, got my degree in music, went to University of Florida, got another degree in a uh, master's degree in education, started on a doctorate, and it, it's always been what I do. I when did it. you first fall in love with music, Mr. Davis? That's a hard question. <laughs> I think, you know, back in probably the mid-1960s, um, you know, I was in probably third grade, second grade, and uh, I woke up one night and heard all this music, and I walked out in my pajamas into the living room, and my father was having a jam session with some of his students. We had a piano, of course, in the home, which he used to compose, um, and he had his uh, vibes set up in there. That was his primary instrument, and uh, I was amazed at uh, uh, the quality of, and just the, the sound, the loudness of the sound and the energy, and I was hooked. Well, Fort Pierce Jazz and Blues Society, Bluebird Education Foundation, we thank you for all that you do for students in St. Lucie County. We hope that some of our students will apply for those scholarships and that you continue to supply those instruments. That's it for this edition of the Spotlight, where we turn the spotlight on the arts. We want to thank our partners in education, and we appreciate each and everything that you do for the students here in St. Lucie Public Schools, Fort Pierce Jazz Society, and Bluebird Educational Foundation. And this is the Spotlight.